Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and today we're going to look at the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system has three primary functions. One, to transport excess tissue fluid back to the bloodstream. Two, to transfer absorbed fat from the intestine to the blood. Three, to provide immunological defenses against disease-causing agents. So let's take a deeper look into the lymphatic system. It is closely related anatomically and physiologically to the circulatory system. The lymphatic system is also a series of vessels. The smallest vessels of the lymphatic system are also known as capillaries. The vessels of the lymphatic system and circulatory system are composed of the same three layers. The lymphatic system is unique in that it is a one-way system that transports fluid to the circulatory system. And here we have the structures of the lymphatic system. The lymph capillaries are one cell thick microscopic vessels found within most tissues. Lymph capillaries are highly permeable and allows fluids from the tissues to enter. For example, within the villi of the small intestine are lymph capillaries known as lacteals. And these lacteals transport fat byproducts away from the digestive system. Once tissue fluid enters the lymphatic capillaries, it's called lymph. Lymph contains nutrients, oxygen, hormones, fatty acids, toxins, and cellular waste products. Lymph capillaries merge together to form larger lymph ducts. Lymph ducts are the vessels of the lymphatic system. The walls of the lymph ducts are similar to the veins um, in our body because they have the only, they have the same three layers and one-way valve that prevent backflow. So it's very similar to the heart system. The pressure that pushes lymph through the lymph ducts comes from the massaging actions produced by nearby skeletal muscle, uh, muscle contractions. And here we have the lymphatic vessels here. Very similar to the heart valves and preventing backflow. Lymph ducts continue to merge together until eventually they empty into one of two principal vessels. We have the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct, seen here and here. The right lymphatic duct drains lymph vessels from the right upper extremity, right thoracic region, so right here and right side of the head and neck. It then empties into the right subclavian vein. And on the other side, we have the thoracic duct. That drains lymph vessels from the rest of your body. The main trunk of the thoracic duct ascends along the spinal column and it empties into the left subclavian uh, vein. The cisterna chili is a small holding sac for lymph. It's located near the lower end of the thoracic duct where the left and right lumbar trunks merge together. So right there. Lymph nodes are bean-shaped structures that filter lymph before it returns to the bloodstream. Lymph nodes uh, serve as a major immunological defense because they contain phagocytic cells that help purify the fluid. Lymph nodes usually occur in clusters in specific regions of the body. We have cervical nodes, axillary nodes, pears, patches, inguinal nodes. Those are listed here.
the following structures comprise lymph nodes. The afferent lymphatic vessels enter the lymph node capsule, creates the framework of the lymph node. The lymphatic nodule, that's uh, compartments within the lymph nodes. Germinal center, the middle of the lymphatic nodule contains uh, phagocytic cells. Sinus, lymph circulates through um, the sinus. And then the efferent lymphatic vessels exit the lymph node. So A for enter, E for exit. E for exit is the easiest way for me to remember which is which. So E for exit, A for uh, enter, even though enter is not an A. Lymphoid organs include the spleen, the thymus, and tonsils. The spleen is a cup-shaped organ located inferior to the diaphragm and posterior to the stomach. The spleen is the largest lymphatic organ. It filters blood by using phagocytic cells, just like the lymph nodes do to filter lymph. The thymus is located in the mediastinum behind the manubrium of the sternum, so right about here. The primary function of this lymphatic organ is to take lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell, and process them into T cells, which help fight off infections. There are two sets of tonsils in the body. We have the pharyngeal tonsils or the adenoids, and those are a collection of lymphatic tissue in the upper section of the pharynx, the nasopharynx. And then we have the palatine tonsils. Those are a collection of lymphatic tissues in the middle section of the pharynx or the oropharynx. Structures of the lymphatic system include these that we talked about, capillaries, lymph, lymph ducts, nodes, and organs, lymphoid organs. And all of these structures help this system to transport excess tissue fluid back to the bloodstream, transfer absorbed fat from the intestine to the blood, provide immunological defenses against disease causing agents. And that's the end of the lymphatic system overview. And then we'll get into uh, the issues that can occur with the lymphatic system. So we talked about the three primary functions already. And it's a very important system in preventing diseases and infection. However, things can occur in the system itself. And we're going to talk about these three issues, lymphadenitis, and then lymphedema, and then Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I have a family member that suffered from Hodgkin's lymphoma. Lymph nodes are bean-shaped structures that filter lymph before it returns to the blood system or the blood stream. These serve as major immunological defense because they contain phagocytic cells and they help purify the fluid. But lymphadenitis, swollen lymph nodes serve as a red flag that something is wrong in your body. Oftentimes it may just be exposure to bacteria or a virus. However, it could also be due to an infection. Swollen lymph nodes are due to an infection is known as lymphadenitis. Swollen lymph nodes are often tender and painful. The location of the swollen lymph node can help you determine what is causing the problem. They're commonly felt in your neck, under your chin, armpits, and in the groin area. What are some of the risk factors for 
lymphadenitis. Common infections that lead to lymphadenitis include strep throat, measles, ear infections, infected tooth, human immunodeficiency virus, otherwise known as HIV. Uncommon infections that lead to lymphadenitis include tuberculosis, sexually transmitted infections, car scratch fever, a bacterial infection caused by a cat scratch or bite, cancer, immune system disorders such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Well, how do you treat this? Um, it depends what the cause is. If it's a viral infection, the individual will be advised to place warm compresses uh, on the swollen lymph node and then wait for the body to heal. For bacterial infections, they'll be given an antibiotic. If it's cancer, the individual will be treated for the type of cancer causing the issue. And then for immune system disorders, the individual will be treated for that immune disorder. Well, how do you prevent this altogether? The best way to prevent it is to make lifestyle choices that help to prevent infections altogether. Uh, sleeping enough each night, washing your hands regularly and thoroughly, brushing and flossing your teeth two times a day, eating a healthy diet. Don't share eating utensils or drinking glasses with other people. Lymphedema is swelling that occurs to one of your arms or legs due to a blockage of your lymphatic system. The blockage limits how effectively lymph is drained, which causes the swelling to increase. Lymphedema is most, common, uh, most commonly caused by the removal or damage of the lymph nodes as a result of cancer treatment. So symptoms can range from mild and barely noticeable to very extreme. Um, so extreme you can't even use the limb. Symptoms of lymphedema include swelling of part of your arms or legs, a feeling of tightness in your arm or leg, range of motion of your arm or leg is limited, and aching in your arm or leg. Primary causes are due to dysfunctions of the lymphatic system. Secondary causes are due to another type of disease or condition that is causing this other um, lymphedema. Primary sources or causes of lymphedema are inherited disorders that occur, that occur more frequently in women. They include Milroy's disease, Meg's disease, and late onset lymphedema. Uh, Milroy uh, nodes form abnormally during infancy. Meg's disease uh, vessels form without valves. So you can't drain the lymph effectively. And then late onset, that's rare. Um, it's a hereditary disorder that occurs after age 35. That's why they call it late onset. Secondary causes of lymphedema are more common than causes of primary causes. So surgery, radiation treatment for cancer, cancer itself, and infections can all lead to uh, lymphedema. Treatment. It can't be cured, but it is possible to treat the symptoms. Light exercises that encourage movement of lymph out of the limb, wrapping the affected arm or leg with a bandage, special massage technique called manual lymph drainage, pneumatic compression, which is accomplished by wearing a sleeve that is connected to a pump that alternates between relaxing and tightening. Compression garments such as long sleeves or stockings that encourage the removal of lymph for the affected limb. 
prevention. If you have cancer, there are a few things you can do to help prevent lymphedema. After surgery or radiation, be aware of the affected limb or the limb where the lymph node or vessels could be blocked. Protect the arm or leg. Wearing gloves when you work in the garden. Rest the affected arm or leg while you are recovering from cancer treatment. Don't apply heat on the affected limb. Elevate your affected limb as much as possible. Avoid tight clothing on the affected limb. And lastly, we have Hodgkin's lymphoma. That is a cancer of your lymphatic system. It occurs when cells within your lymphatic system grow abnormally and begin spreading to other parts of your body. Another common type of cancer to your, non, or to your lymphatic system is known as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is more common. It occurs when a specific type of cell within the lymphatic system begins to grow abnormally. Symptoms, painless swelling of the nodes, constant fatigue, constant tiredness, unexplained weight loss, loss of appetite. Risk factors include being between 15 and 35 or older than 55, a family history. Uh, males are slightly more likely to develop Hodgkin's lymphoma. Treatment includes chemotherapy, radiation, stem cell transplant. Um, and this can depend on several things like your health, your age, and the stage of the disease and your preference. So chemotherapy uses chemicals to kill cells. Radiation uses high energy beams like x-rays to kill cells. And then stem cell transplant replaces diseased bone marrow with healthy stem cells that grow into new bone marrow. Prevention, researchers are still working on um, determining if there are actions one can take to prevent Hodgkin's lymphoma altogether. And that's about it. That's the end of these lymphatic system issues. If you have any more questions, ask me in Canvas, email me, and I'll be happy to talk more about you with this. But until then, see you guys later. Stay safe. Good luck.